Hello folks. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be doing some more weld strength testing with the Harbor Freight 125 amp flux core wire feed welder. Now this is going to be part two. In part one, I did some comparison with a 240 volt welder uh, because this Harbor Freight welder is 120 volts only. So in the first video, I did some comparisons with a 240 volt welder just to show, um, you know, at least a little bit kind of what kind of strength differences you could get with the 240 volt welder. I decided to split it into multiple parts since that video was getting kind of long, so this is going to be part two. Now in this video I'm not going to do uh, any comparisons with the 240 volt welder. Uh, I still have some ideas for uh, things to try to compare different welds uh, with this welder versus the 240 volt, uh, but just due to limited time and the fact that um, I just woke up sick and feel pretty terrible today, <laughs> I'm not going to get very much done. Uh, but I did want to at least get some part of it done since I do have the time today. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weld up some sample pieces with the Harbor Freight Welder. And I'm going to try a bunch of different methods to see what kind of differences in strength we either get or don't get uh, with different techniques. So I have a bunch of little uh, eighth inch and three sixteenths pieces that I'm going to weld together. Just kind of a standard corner join on each one. I'll weld just the inside corner uh, and then I'll bend them and see how much additional strength I get, if any, with different methods. Uh, so in the last video I bent a couple that just had a single pass, uh, just kind of a standard weld. In this video I'm going to do a multi-pass, so I'll do actually three passes. Uh, I'm going to do one that I preheat first. Uh, I'm going to do one that I just run a lot slower because somebody suggested uh, try a, a slower travel speed. Now the last time um, I practiced a little bit first to try and get uh, you know, to kind of dial in a good travel speed that gave me a good looking weld. So um, we'll see how much uh, how much difference it makes if I just go slower. And I'm going to prep the pieces a little bit better this time. Uh, now these pieces are cold rolled, so they don't have a, a real thick uh, mill scale on them. But I'm going to go ahead and clean the mill scale off of all of them anyways. And uh, just see uh, what, if any, difference that really makes. Now, um, you know, one of the advantages of a flux core is that you know, theoretically it'll burn through a little bit more of that stuff than a gas shielded MIG will. But even still, it's always better to be clean, you know, as clean as possible, no matter what kind of weld, you know, what kind of weld process you're using. So I'll clean them all up before the testing as well. And like I said, I do have, uh, you know, some more plans for uh, maybe down the road doing some more comparison with the 240 volt welder um, and, and just some more testing in general with this. But uh, for now, that's what I'm going to what I do today and uh, see what kind of results we get. So I'll get these pieces cleaned up and I'll get started. And just as a reminder, this is the welder I'm using. It is the Chicago Electric 125 amp flux core wire feed welder. Uh, now that's what it says on the box. It says, you know, 125 amp welder, but it's actually the same welder as their older uh, 90 amp flux core wire welder. Uh, if you look at the spec sheet, um, all the specs are the same. Um, you know, it's, it's basically the identical welder. They just basically, if you look at the um, you know, that kind of the output curve, they just um, took a higher spot in that output curve for the box. Um, but, you know, the, the, the output is the same. So this basically the 90 amp flux core welder, 125 amp flux core welder, uh, same welder from Harbor Freight. And that's the part number on the front of my welder. So uh, if you were wondering, you know, if you're looking at the catalog and you want to find out just exactly which welder I'm running, uh, that's the model number. All right, so I have all the sample welds that I did set up here. And I'll go down the row and explain what I did for each one and uh, show the welds. Uh, and then we'll try bending them all and see uh, which one breaks most easily and if any uh, m meaningful strength was added with any of the different procedures. Now I am going to bend them all in this direction. So I'm going to you know, try crushing the joint together. And the reason for that is that this is actually the way in which the welds are going to have the least strength. And that's just because with an inside corner weld like this, um, you know, it's going to have the most strength um, in that direction. Uh, versus actually bending in this direction. And because uh, the one in the last video failed so quickly bent this way, um, I'm going to bend it this way with all of these welds also. Uh, because the last one broke so easily when bent in this direction, uh, I think uh, continuing to bend in the same direction is going to have the best uh, possibility of showing us a difference in strength. So, um, you know, if one does bend over way further before it breaks or doesn't break at all, uh, then we know we've gained quite a bit of strength versus the other setup. 
Now, none of these welds will probably be directly comparable to the weld in the last video, and that's because I actually switched wire for this. And in part one, I was using the wire that came with the welder, which was O30 wire. Now, I had in intended to use some Lincoln Inner Shield uh, NR211, um, which I found just to be really good flux core wire, but I only had an O35 uh, diameter, and the O35 wire didn't really run well at all in the Harbor Freight welder. So uh, since then, I've gotten some of the Lincoln uh, NR211 in an O30, and so that's what I ran today, and I gotta say, this, this wire just runs so much better than the Harbor Freight well wire. Um, it, it lays down a much smoother weld, uh, much more definable puddle. I mean, you can, you can see the puddle and manipulate it a lot more easily, um, and you can really tell when it's starting to wet out. Uh, so I, I just really prefer the way this wire runs, and uh, we'll see if that gives us a big difference. So uh, as far as the welds that I did here, this is actually 8th inch material, and this is just a standard, uh, just a straight single pass on 8th inch material. And uh, not the prettiest weld in the world, but it definitely, um, other than a little bit of a cold start, it, it went in there pretty flat, pretty smooth. Uh, it seemed like it was burning in well. Uh, we'll see how it holds up when we try and bend it, but um, this is kind of not really a control per se, uh, but just to see if the weld on the 8th inch material holds up a lot better than the 3 16 material. All the rest of the welds were on 3 16 inch material. So we'll bend this one first, see how it does. Uh, then I have, again, just a single pass on the 3 16 material, and I just went really slow. Um, not really a whole lot slower than I would normally, but uh, if I tried to go any slower, it, it just started to build up and not really do any good at all. So um, this was basically just a fairly slow pass, and you can tell um, just how much slower it was because you can see how much more discolored this piece of metal is than this piece of 8th inch. Um, so you can tell just I just went a lot slower on this weld. Uh, to the point that the whole piece heated up quite a bit. Now the next weld over, uh, this one you can see it discolored even more. Uh, this is three passes and that was actually not a stop and start. The welder itself just kind of sputtered a little bit at the end of that pass. Uh, so that's why that looks kind of like that. I don't know why it did that, but uh, this is actually three passes. Uh, one pass at the bottom and then two on top. And each pass went in a little bit smoother and I think that's because the piece was heating up as I went. Uh, this last one I probably should have had just a little bit higher up, but Either way, that's three passes, and again, you can see just how much hotter that piece got just because I didn't let it cool down between the passes. Um, after the weld, I just uh, wire wheeled the slag off and then just went straight in with the next pass. So this piece got really good and hot by the end. Now this next weld, this is the one that I preheated. Now again, this is just a single pass ran um, at kind of the speed that I would normally run, and it still had a little bit of a cold start going. Um, it it, it kind of... It takes a while to get a good puddle going with, uh, you know, with a good wetting in. But uh, so even with the hot piece, it still got started a little slow. But uh, this one did seem to go in quite a bit hotter uh, than you know any of the other first passes. And I did heat this this piece to 500 degrees before I started. So I put one tack on the end just to kind of hold the two pieces together, and then I used a torch to heat it up to 500 degrees, and then I just went straight in and, and welded the one pass. So we'll see how this one does. Uh, and then for this final weld, I just put a single pass on the out on this uh, inside corner. Uh, but then what I did is I actually um, I offset this piece back a little bit so that it, it ended up with a um, kind of a corner on the outside that I could fill. And then I went ahead and ran a pass on this outside also. Uh, so what I was saying earlier, how when you have an inside corner joint, it has the most strength in that direction. Um, if you want it to have strength in both directions, you have to have a weld on the other side too. And that makes a huge, huge difference. Um, so my guess is that um, regardless of how I did with any of the rest of them, I bet this one's going to hold up the best, but we'll find out. Uh, I'll get started bending them and we'll see how it goes. So first weld, 8th inch material. Uh, so that held up really well. Um, you can see that uh, both pieces of metal were bending over. Um, it was just bending around the weld itself. Um, it crushed all the way down. The weld didn't break, and uh, the weld didn't separate at all, even right down into the root. So uh, eighth inch material with the Lincoln wire, and uh, that held up just fine. Okay, now we have the 3 16 material with a single slow pass.
All right, so this one definitely held up better than uh, the single pass in the first video. Um, now, whether that was because I went slower or because of the Lincoln wire, I can't say 100%, but we still did not have uh, the greatest penetration. Uh, you can see from about here down to about here, there was uh, basically no penetration. The metal was actually, the weld was actually just laying on top. Uh, and you can see that if you look here, you can see the shiny spot, um, you know, where it was shiny there because I had ground it clean before I did the welding and the weld just laid down in there and didn't tie in even the slightest bit. And as you go down the weld, you can start to see where that shininess comes back again down here. And you can see that kind of lines up with this area down here where um, the weld pool just wasn't even flowing down into the base of the joint at all. Um, so, you know, it, it really just was not flowing all the way down into the base of that joint. So held up better than before, um, but still just huge areas where it, it didn't tie in at all. But either way, that was the one with the really slow pass, um, but single pass, not preheated or anything like that. All right, multi-pass weld. All right, you can see this one held up quite a bit better. Um, just barely any separation there at the back. And uh, you know, it bent this 3 16 material straight over. So this is definitely a much stronger weld. I think the biggest thing is just the fact that I went back over with an, another pass and then yet another pass without letting anything cool down. And uh, those second two passes, um, you know, very clearly were going in hotter and uh, smoother. So at least on a small part like this with the Lincoln wire and three passes, uh, that held up really well. So the next one is the preheated weld. All right, now that definitely held up better than the slow weld with no preheat, and there definitely is more penetration here. Uh, a lot less just huge areas with uh, just totally no fusion at all. Uh, but there still is an area here towards the beginning where there's um, a big lack of fusion there. You know, that's kind of to be expected because, you know, I'm starting on that tack and everything. However, again, this was with the piece already 500 degrees, so you know, even with it at 500 degrees, we still have a little bit of a cold start there. And I did, you know, hang around until I had a good puddle going. Uh, but you can see even once I got going, uh, there's still a, a big area here that had no tie-in. And you can see that matches up uh, up in there with a, you know, a shiny spot where you can still see the scratches where I ground it. So, so, so definitely a line and no tie-in here. And then on the very end, there's a little area similarly with a lack of tie-in right there. It's actually pretty much the same. So if you were to just to follow this along, it's still getting no tie-in right up there. It just didn't break there. So if I pull that apart, you can see where there's that area right here where the weld just, just wasn't tied in down in here. So uh, held up better than with no preheat, but um, still not, uh, not full penetration, not full tie-in. Um, it did, again, did hold up better than with no preheat. Um, you know, it did start to kind of bend the pieces over a little bit. So, but either way, uh, that's how that one held up with single pass preheated to 500 degrees. Uh, and finally, we have the one that is welded on both sides of the joint. So there you go. There's the difference between welding both sides and welding just one side. Now this inside joint, um, this first one, the inside corner joint, uh, wasn't even the best pass out of all the ones I did, not by a long shot. Um, you know, I didn't preheat or anything and that weld went in kind of cold, um, didn't go that great. It started to wet out a little bit better towards the end, but 
Uh, just not really the greatest joint of all of them. But despite that, because I came and welded the other side afterwards, uh, this thing didn't start to fail at all. Um, just bent the pieces straight over. Uh, nothing cracked, nothing started to separate. So, so if you want the best strength, uh, weld both sides. So not a surprising result there, but just wanted to show um, that uh, it makes a big difference if you can weld both sides of it. So there you go. There's the results of my second round of strength testing the welds on this Harbor Freight welder. Uh, with the Lincoln NR211 wire, uh, I think it did a lot better job than with the Harbor Freight wire. But I still don't know if I would call it a uh, 3 16 capable welder uh, for with single pass. Now with multi-pass, you can definitely get a lot better results. Uh, depending on what I was building, um, you know, this, this weld would probably be plenty good enough. And if you can weld both sides of the joint, uh, you're going to be in a pretty good position as well. Uh, now keep in mind the first pass on this uh, weld and on even this one, um, you know, the inside of the weld probably looks about like this one does where there's going to be, you know, not full fusion, kind of some spots of lack of penetration and that kind of thing. But the extra passes, you know, kind of made up for it. And on this one, you know, welding on the backside kind of made up for it in terms of strength. But either way, uh, with the right welds and the right wire, I think you can get a decent weld out of this machine. Uh, you just have to be mindful of the limitations and, you know, keep your joint design kind of in mind when you're welding stuff up so that, um, you know, you know you're going to get uh, as much strength out of the welds as your uh, project needs. You know, whether you can put multiple passes on it, whether you can weld the backside of it. Um, or what, so that you can, you know, get as much strength as your project needs. And then on eighth inch material, um, you know, it actually just held up pretty darn well, even with just a single pass. Now, as far as preheating goes, uh, it definitely helps. And, you know, if you're trying to really get the most strength you can out of a weld, uh, especially on thicker material, um, and you can preheat it, you know, it's not something that you're going to damage or cause any problems by preheating it. And you, you know, and you have the ability to preheat it, uh, it doesn't hurt. It does help a little bit, uh, but just bear in mind, it's not magic. Uh, we did get a little bit more strength out of it with the preheat versus not, um, but it still broke quite a bit easier than the multi-pass or uh, the one welded on the other side, or even just the eighth inch material weld that I didn't preheat or anything. So definitely a, a capable machine with the right wire and the right uh, weld setup, um, but I still feel most comfortable with it on eighth inch material and under just because, um, you know, even just a single pass held up great in that situation. So I think that's going to do it for part two. I don't know if I'll make a part three or not. I still have some ideas of things I could do. Um, if you have any ideas for what you would like to see in a part three, post them up down below. It would be interesting to do some more comparisons to the 240 volt welder. Uh, now that I have some 030 Lincoln wire to run in this machine, and honestly, if you take nothing else from this video, uh, the big recommendation would be if you have one of these welders and you want to get as much as you can out of it, uh, get some good quality wire for it uh, because the Lincoln wire versus the wire that it came with was just night and day. And if you have any questions or anything like that, post those up down below as well. I guess that's it for now. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.